Well, hello there, everybody. How you doing? Dave Fenoy here, another Wednesday. And, of course, that means another Ask Dave Fenoy Anything. It is 6 p.m. Pacific, and you might be on Facebook Live or LinkedIn or Twitter X or YouTube, wherever you are. Hello. How you doing? Uh, I want to remind you that all the Ask Dave Fenoy Anythings live on my YouTube channel, Dave Fenoy VoiceOver Training. I hope you'll stop by in case you missed a show you wanted to see, and uh, please subscribe. Also, if you are interested in voiceover coaching with me, DaveFenoy.com, click on the Study VO tab at the top, and uh, you can book yourself. Uh, also, tomorrow, um, I'm doing a, an hour and a half uh, workshop uh, for uh, GVAA. Uh, it's from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. It's only $39. Uh, the globalvoiceacademy.com is the place you want to go, the globalvoiceacademy.com. Uh, and uh, going to have some fun and help you improve uh, your chances for booking, especially video games. But I find that character work helps me with everything. All right, time to meet our guest, and here she is. Yay! Emma O'Neill. Hello. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Real good. Good to see you again after VO Atlanta. You too. Always a pleasure. Oh, yeah. Uh, you were uh, uh, quite popular. Uh, <laughs> I was I was looking back at uh, the pictures on your Facebook page, and I was like, oh, yeah. I, for some reason, I didn't take that many pictures. A lot of people took pictures of me and with me. I didn't get my camera out that much. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it seems like you managed to get yourself with just about everybody. Well, I accosted you I, at one point. I do remember that. I kind of grabbed you and shoved a camera in your face. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, yeah. and not the first time, I might add. No, it's not <laughs> the first time. Here, here we are. That was a super fangirl moment of mine, 2019. Oh. Well, you know what? Um, I um, I looked at your website, and wait a minute, oh, they're clapping again. I looked at your website and listened to your videos, uh, listened to your your demos. Uh, now I'm I'm fanboying out. Uh, you are quite the talent, Emma O'Neill. Quite Thank the talent. But let's let's find out how you got there. In your bio, you talked about being a child actor and mm -hmm. doing a uh, a McDonald's commercial. Oh, can I say that? A McDonald's <laughs> commercial uh, when you were what, two years old. Uh, I think the first one was two. I worked with them until I was about eight, seven or oh, eight. Boy. Yeah, I was oh, there so for the, the ice so, cream. I so McDonald's put you through college. Uh, they they helped us emigrate to Canada. My parents spent that money. <laughs> ah, well, well now, wh where were you from before Canada? Ireland. Ah. Yes. So do you, and you know what? Just as you said that, I detected a little bit of, of the bar and There's a bit every once in a while, but it's not, it's not strong enough for the American uh, market. They don't think I'm Irish enough. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. So. And, you, and, and you've got the blood. <laughs> it's, and the hair, you know. Got uh, it there all. you go. There got you it go. All. Yeah. So your family moved over. How old were you when? Eight. Oh, you were eight when you moved to. To Canada, yeah. To Canada. Yeah. Ah, so you did yeah. those commercials in Ireland. Mm -hmm. How about that? Well, yeah. you know, McDonald's is worldwide. Uh, not all not all necessarily the same recipe around the world. No. There's no, things that they don't have in the food in other places that they've allowed to be here. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. So yeah. you, you're eight years old. You move over. Um, when did you start uh, moving into entertainment and theater? I was placed on the stage as a child. Uh, my mother was a dance teacher and a theater teacher, so that was just what we did. And it was, you know, that was what she did in her time. So we spent time with her and that's what we did. And of the three daughters, for me, it stuck. Um, and I ended up going to theater school um, for university. And that was not a great experience. So I left. So what, what, what was not so great about that experience? <laughs> 
the I, the, the faculty and I just didn't, we didn't gel. Like they, they wouldn't allow me to be funny. Everything had to be dramatic. Everything had to be sad. Everything had to be Shakespeare. And it was instead of allowing people to explore the different avenues that were available in their strengths and character, that was very, it was a very regimented program. And it was like, you must do, do this and only this. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I did get a lot out of it. I, I studied voice not voice acting, but voice as in phonetics and linguistics, which is why I don't speak with a Canadian accent. It's you can't really figure out where I'm from. So, well, let me let me ask you this. When you did that, were they trying to get you to have an American accent as opposed to what we think of as a Canadian accent? It was called speaking North American naturally. So we called it SNAN. And our teacher was from Chicago it was a guy named David Smuckler. And he well, there's a last had, name for you. Yeah, David David Smuckler. And he had decided to create the North American version of received pronunciation. So it was like RP in England, SNAN in North America. So give me an example. Are, are you speaking uh, North American uh, English now? I think I think so. I don't I, it's not something that I do consciously anymore. Uh, but... You know, it, it's interesting because I, I think in some ways uh, many of us uh, have a, I'll call it uh, America's language of business, and then we have some other ways to speak uh, when we're with people, perhaps in our family, we're more associated with from a particular culture, yeah. uh, cold break, uh, as it were. And I actually think everybody does it. As a black person, we definitely do it. Uh, yeah. But I, I think we all... You go to work and you speak a certain way. You're at home or hanging with you know, your crew. It's something else. Yep, it's something absolutely. else. Absolutely. So now, how has that helped you in what you're doing now in voiceover, the theater training? The well, voice specifically didn't. I I didn't have a block of oh, that's a she sounds Canadian. She can't work in the U.S. market. Yeah. Um. That was. A huge help, and with theater in general, because you're you're learning character development. So, and that's what all of this, regardless of whether it's corporate narration or video games, it's all character. So, I understood that already coming into voice that I had to develop. You know, who am I? Like, who am I talking to? What is this about? What am I trying to say? Where am I? All of the the things that come into play with character. Oh yeah, I I, I so many people who are just knocking on the doors think it's about oh how will I say these words. Uh, what yeah. what words important that I need to hit here? That kind of thing, and it's like, mm, no, that'll yeah. that'll happen automatically when you do all the other things you're supposed to do first. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you've been uh, you started knocking on the door of voiceover when? Is around two thousand nine ish. Um, I was. I had just moved back to Canada. I was living in Taiwan for a long time and I was living, I moved back to Canada and I didn't, I didn't know that voice acting was a thing. And a person, like a friend of mine mentioned that she's like, you have a great voice. You should do voiceover the way that most people get it. You've got a great voice. You should do voiceover. And I was like, I have no idea what this thing is. And so for my birthday, I was given a voiceover class, like private lessons with one of the coaches here in Toronto. And I went into MCS Studios, which is still standing. It's one of the oldest studios in Toronto. And I worked with a guy named Mike Kirby and was like, what is this, this thing? This is so much fun. And so I kind of, I, play, I toyed around with, I met, I met Ellie Ray then, who is just <laughs> a goddess in all forms. She's a unicorn in human form. And she and, became. And I, where does she get the energy? It's it has never ever waned. Like I've yeah. known this woman since two thousand nine, and it's never ever. I've I've always wanted to put a, an electrical deeper. plug on her and then plug in a cord and <laughs> no. see if we could. I know. You know, light up a house or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's wonderful. She's wonderful. Yeah, so I worked with her for a while, and then it's it just kind of moved from there that I started to realize, like, wow, I get to act again, but it's not about how I look or how tall or how short or how big or how little or how, like it, all of the, the this ridiculousness of screen, which is what I was annoyed by, um, 
didn't come into play with voice. I just got to act. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so it's about 2009. When do you, when did you really start hitting your stride? 2011, I did my first demo, which wasn't great, but you know, did my first demo and, and, and farmed that out. And I got my first, uh, agent in 20, 12 or 2013 and i remember when i got the email from them because i had sent it so long before that when i got the email saying you've made the short list please send us this information i thought it was spam like i didn't answer it and <laughs> <laughs> sure and then i got another email about two weeks later saying we sent following up on our previous email you've made the short list please send us this information i was like oh oh they were serious oh you're real okay so I filled everything out and ended, ended up signing with them in 2013 or 2014 and booked in my first week. And it just kind of, it went from there. So that was the only agency I've ever had that, that romance period of when you first get onto the roster, that oh, yeah. because you're the they new voice, you, you book. Everything. Yeah. That was the and only when time. you book in your first week, oh boy, oh boy, nothing yeah. like that. Uh, yeah. I had the good fortune of booking early with every agent that uh, when I was in San Francisco before I moved you. down here, booked early. And once I came down here, booked early, and uh, then it was early and often. So, <laughs> yay, Good. thank you. Yay. Congratulations. Now, uh, you're sitting in your studio there. When you came on, we were chit-chatting. Um, I halfway jokingly complained about uh, you've got studio bricks and if I had it to do all over over again, I would probably go Studio Bricks way. But behind me, I, I have my trusty uh, five by seven whisper whisper room, which has served me for oh a couple of decades. Mm -hmm. So uh, what what brought you to Studio Bricks? What is it you like about it? And and tell me about the rest of your studio and setup. Um, studio Bricks, it's so. We moved into this house about five years ago and built a custom booth in the basement. But this is a really old house, built in 1932, and it's like the original house. Nothing has been updated. There's still plaster and lath on the walls. It's the original windows. It's the original joist. So the, the thing is falling apart. Um, and so in the basement, because the floors aren't completely even, we compromised on the ceiling of the booth. So that the walls and everything else were solid and and sound isolated. But if anyone walked through the house, <laughs> you could hear them walking. So it was like, no one was, a, we, there was the, the running joke was I would get a text message saying, CICI, -C -I, can I come in? Oh boy. And if I didn't answer that, you weren't allowed to come into the house yet because I was in the middle of recording something. Yeah. And one night, um, my wife has a 16 year old son and he kind of, you know, he had a room upstairs and then he was talking about like, wouldn't it be cool if I was in the basement, but I was working in the basement. And, um, one night sitting on the couch, we're like, well, what if we move him down into the basement and we move your music studio down into the basement and I take over the room upstairs, but I'd have to find a studio. Oh, wait, well, wait, back up for a minute. I'm liking this story, but your wife is a musician. She is. What does she play? Everything she can get her hands on. By the way, there she is. There Obama. she is. And how long have you guys been married? Six years. Oh, okay. So y'all are almost newlyweds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, so your wife's a musician. Uh, what yep. what does uh, your stepson do? He's in school. He is, his name is Noah. He's autistic, but highly functioning and like ridiculously smart. He's deaf, yet he can sing and play music. So oh, that doesn't goodness. make any sense. Um, he's a high achiever, like his mother. And um, yeah, he's in school and he wants to be an engineer. Okay. Okay. Well, God bless him. Yeah. Now, yeah. Back, back to your studio. And when you brought up your wife, I wanted to let <laughs> everybody <true>. see. Um, <laughs> so you got the studio bricks moved mm -hmm. it upstairs or yep. brought it in and set it up upstairs. What's your mm -hmm. microphone there? It looks like a 103. No, it's a U87. Ah. Oh. 7AI and then I've got my 416 here um so I can go back and forth depending on what it is that I'm mm -hmm. voicing for. And then I have a control desk outside the booth because the booth is really small. So the, the booth that we built downstairs was a 5 by 5 by 6 and this is a 3 by 4. So when I first moved into this booth it was like ooh 
Oh, wow. This is yeah. little, but the quality of studio bricks is just. They're very good. Bar none. They're, very they're good. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what's your interface? I use an Apollo Twin MK2, so Universal Audio, and I use a MacBook and I uh, record into Adobe Audition. Okay. You know, people uh, want to know, sometimes I get the question, well, how come you don't ask everybody about their studio? And I try to, sometimes we get off on a tangent, yeah. but uh, so many people that I see knocking on the doors for voiceover, uh, they'll maybe be taking lessons with me. And then one day they'll announce, Hey, you know, I, I bought a microphone and uh, uh, an interface and I will what did you get? And then it's something that I would not have recommended. And I'm like, yeah. why, why not tell me beforehand? I could have helped you with that. But yeah, no, yeah. But you, you've got all the right stuff. And uh, I, uh, what, which is your mic of choice? What do you use mostly? The U87 or the, yeah. Yeah, the U87, yeah. I use my 416 95% of the time. And sometimes then I swing in my 103. Yeah. And that's Clementine, uh, named after the character that the Lee Everett character that I played in the Walking Dead game, Protected. Oh, I love that. She's, she's <laughs> an older dog now, because that's been a while. She's about yes. 14 years old. Uh, and she just doesn't have the manners to be quiet uh, when she's in the studio. I Doesn't feel she needs to. Some, feel some things uh, you, you just can't train out of them <laughs> hey you know you you um you had a quote uh wait that's not it uh where is your quote here there it is uh on your facebook page that got mm -hmm. my attention discipline is just self-love in motion do yep. the inner work build that practice love and life uh the work is worth it and so are you it's time J. Mike Fields, not a writer that I am familiar with, but why has this so much meaning for you, that, that this is the statement on your Facebook page? 2024 for me, the beginning of every year, I, I kind of sit and reflect as to what I want to accomplish. I'm, I'm a very driven individual, um, and I like to... I, I, have a very, very strong focus. My, my wife is like, you are, you're like a dog with a bone. When you decide that you're going to do something, that's it. Nothing will get in your way. And 2024 for me is about doing the internal work and paying it, like really working on myself and working on my self-confidence and working on my self-worth and not relying so much on, um, external val validation or accolades and they're all wonderful and they're great but if you if you're not believing in yourself if you're not able to stand in your own worth and 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 know that you are you deserve a place at the table then the accolades and the external stuff don't matter so this is what this is about it's about you know doing the thing things when they're hard, doing the things when I don't want to, you know, going to the gym, doing the training, getting up early, all of the stuff that you don't necessarily want to do, but you know is going to benefit you in the long run. And you're just not a gym rat. You're a yoga gym rat. I am. I am both of those things. Yes. And, and uh, am I to understand you also teach yoga? I do. Ah, and how long have you been doing that? About 25 years. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know, I'm a little, I'm a little jealous there. Uh, I go to the gym, I work out, I stretch, but, uh, for most of my life when I was younger and an athlete, it was football, it was track and, yeah. Yeah. um, but didn't do yoga cause yeah, that's for girls. Uh, so I'm not real bendy. Right. And, uh, so I do stretches now and it's like, oh my God, that hurts. But <laughs> oh my god, I, 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 I need to be doing this. <laughs> you do. Flexibility. Flexibility is very, very important. You don't need to be uber bendy, but you need to be able, you know, you yeah. want to be able to tie your shoes by yourself. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um <laughs> a few months ago I was about twenty pounds heavier. And that was a pr bending over and oh god, I can't get yeah. down there to my shoe. Oh man, yeah. man. Oh. Good for you. Lose your weight. Stay healthy. Uh, yep. Get bendy. I'm, I'm a little jealous. I tell people now if I uh, 
if I had it to do over again, I'd start doing yoga as a young man. Uh, mm -hmm. And I tell my daughter, who has a 10-year-old son, I know he's bendy now, but get that kid in yoga. Absolutely. It'll, it'll be wonderful. Um, what are your thoughts on opportunities for women in VO now? And, and also, as a gay woman, um, has that ever affected your work? Not that I know of, not that I'm aware of. I don't, I, I have never been, touch wood, I have never experienced discrimination based on, you know, who I love. Okay. Um, so again, to my knowledge, there's a possibility that it has happened, but it, it, it hasn't been something that has been done in front of me. Yeah. Um, and you know, hopefully, uh, especially in the world in which you and I live and the voiceover community lives, yeah. um, it's not an issue. Uh, and, and not an issue that you have to bring up or if it does come up is is an issue. Yeah. Uh, I just wonder from time to time what, uh, what that's like because I don't know. Um, let's get some questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was there and I'm... Janet Peters, who has a marvelous voice. Didn't Clementine knock no. over in person with my voiceover session with you? Yeah. Knock me over my... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, gosh, I forgot about that. Uh, I'll never forget that. I uh, love your work, Em, and your, your beautiful attitude. Getting Thank up you. early to say, LOL. Well, yeah, before... Yes, in the times before the, the pandemic... Uh, when you could have people uh, in your house a lot. Um, mm -hmm. She was in town and came through and took a lesson, and my dog knocked her over. <laughs> oh. Oopsie. <laughs> Just terrible. Uh, let's pop in and see who we've got here. Tom Antonellis. Oh, wow. I do the same thing at the beginning of the year, Emma. I love that. I then uh, redirect at each quarter. Yep. Uh, and, you know... It, it's funny, at the beginning of the year, New Year's resolutions, in some ways it's almost a joke, but it really is kind of a good time uh, to go, you know what, uh, what do I want to accomplish over the next 12 months? And Tom, mm -hmm. I like that idea of uh, checking in with yourself, and perhaps uh, sometimes we need some uh, partners to help keep us uh, online there with it. Uh, Kat Peterson. Uh, thank you so much for having Emma on. Emma is such a delightful uh, force for good and encouragement. And, and you know what? Um, not that I've gotten to speak with you for long periods of time at conventions. Uh, Clementine, please. Uh, but you draw a, a crowd to you, I think, just because... Uh, of your positive energy. Uh, every you. time I saw you, there were people around us. The number of pictures I saw of you and damn near everybody uh, just spoke <laughs> volumes uh, about who you are and how the world sees you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's see. Uh, speaking of uh, lights, Galena White. Uh, I can't crisscross applesauce. My knees never touch the ground. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, yes. We were, we were talking about, uh, yeah. And, uh, oh, Olivia Zita, look a uh, big hugs oh, yeah. to you both. Emma, you are such an inspiration. See, see, big and, big uh, and, and Olivia, that was it Saturday night. It's still okay. It's still okay. You, you were all right. <laughs> Some people were having big fun. and uh, They were, yes. Terry Briscoe. Hey, Dave. Hey, Emma. Hey, ADFA fam. Emma, you kick ass. Hi, Terry. That's, that's, we were in the same room, and we still didn't get to say hi to each other at VOA. Oh, There's like, we missed so many people. It's wild. Okay, let's see. Tom, again, I think this is something. I have a few things. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. I have a few things of mine I keep before each step in the booth to work. Do you have something uh, you mantra to yourself before recording? That's a good question. What's what When you are going to step in the booth, do your auditions, do a job, uh, 
uh, I mean, do you, you know, uh, tap yourself on the head, do a little dance or something to, for luck or get your, your vocal cords ready? I start every morning with guided meditation. So the second I wake up before I do anything, I do a guided meditation. So because your brain's in theta brain at that point, you're not in your organization. You're like, I'm going to do these things and I'm going to make rational decisions brain. You're in your malleable brain, the brain that can learn much quicker. So I listen to guided meditations, usually based in gratitude um, and a lot of I am stuff. So it's like, mm. I am. Mm. And let me address that because I also talk to myself uh, in those ways. And I'm a great believer in gratitude. Yes. I'm a great believer in visualizing what it is that you want for yourself. But yes. you have to speak of it as having it, as now. being it's it. It's not in the future. Now. It's already right. having, yep. Um, I'm not a particularly religious person. Um, because of the crimes of organized religion, but yeah. I do believe in a higher power. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do believe that uh, the things we say, the things we think uh, have power. Yes. Uh, and if our thoughts are stale, negative, if our words are stale, negative, that's what we're going to get. That's what we're going to get. Yeah. yeah, so believe that. be thankful now for that blessing you want uh, in, in time coming up. And there's a trick that works, I find really helpful, that um, if you struggle with stating, you know, I am so grateful for the booking that I received or, you know, the, the, the money that will let, let landed in my bank account, or whatever the case may be, or the agency that I signed with, you think about something that's already happened that actually has already happened that has made you feel the way that you want to feel. And you sit in that for at least 30 seconds. And then in that 30 seconds, now state as if you already have the thing that, it, that you are wanting. And it trains your brain to anticipate always feeling this like, oh, excitement. This is so anticipate wonderful. Anticipate and grateful. expect. Yes. Expect good things to happen. I've also learned that uh, even when you do that, not everything's going to go your way. No. Uh, and uh, my mother, when we would talk about prayer, uh, she would say, don't ever pray for things. Pray for your highest good. Yes. Because we often don't know uh, what our highest good is and that thing that we may be praying for, that car, that girl or guy, that this or that or the other, may actually not be good for us. Absolutely. Anyway. So it's not going to be in service today. Don't know how I got how we got off on that tangent, but uh, there we were. D.F. Raisin, as a musician, I was already using PreSona Studio One, but now trying to do VO, I hear a lot of people using Twisted Wave and sometimes Audacity. What made you go with Audition? I don't know. I used to use Audacity. I used that for a really long time, and I used Twisted Wave. I have that on my phone for you know, car auditions, if I get an audition and I'm out and I need to record something super fast, I have Twisted Wave on my phone. Um, but I just, I I like audition and I, I, I think I just like the Creative Cloud platform because I use many different things within that. I use Rush for video, I use Adobe for sound, I use Photoshop, I use a bunch of the different apps within Creative Cloud. And I think that's why I started using it. Um, and then also just because so many people within voiceover use it, so a lot of people understand it really well. So it was a platform, it was a, an, inter, I'm sorry, a DAW that if I had questions about, I didn't have to go and look on YouTube. I was able to ask people that I know. Yeah. And it was easier to, to work with that. You know, and uh, it is a great format, a great program. I don't use it. I used Twisted Wave for years. Mm -hmm. Um but Twisted Wave was always overkill, for that matter. Audition uh, is overkill. Um, I don't always recommend Audacity to people because if something goes wrong, there's nobody to call. Uh, I like the idea if I paid something for it, I've, there's some recourse. Uh, yes. But I really like Twisted Wave. Uh, and I'm not saying that to disagree with your choice of, of what you're using. Yes. 
But Twisted Wave does everything uh, we as voice actors need. need to do. Um, mm-hmm. And I think they uh, have offered a, a PC version now. We'll see. Uh-huh. Uh, Terry Briscoe, what was your studio setup like before you got your studio bricks? Ah, good question. In the before well, was, times. In the before times, I was in the basement. I had a custom built booth. Um, so it was a five by six, six inch walls, uh, double walled. It was fantastic. Um, I was on a TLM 103 at that point with the 416. Um, everything else was relatively the same, but the sound changed a little bit with the the move from the basement upstairs and the change of the mic and the change of the booth. Um, But it wasn't a dramatic difference. But I mean, I've worked in everything. My very first booth was a blue storage box stuffed with mattress foam and holes poked (laughs) in the back of it with a USB mic stuck in the middle of it and my face stuck inside the box. And it like I lived in a studio apartment on the 22nd floor overlooking a highway. And the quietest room in that studio was the bathroom. So I would cover the bathroom floor with blankets. I would put this storage box on top of the sink. And I, I recorded national commercials in that thing. So (laughs) (laughs) you can make anything sound good. You know, I, I I thought the uh, pillow forts and blanket forts in uh, hotel rooms (laughs) were tough. Build a wicked pillow fort. Oh my, oh my. (laughs) I love that. Uh, Oh, here's Jeff Gelder. Emma, it was so great to finally meet you at VO Atlanta. I'm looking forward to getting to know you more. My question is, what do you do in the slow times when jobs aren't when jobs aren't booking as much? After I get off the floor from being so depressed that I'm never going to work again, I'm going to have to go and work at Starbucks. That happens all the time. Um, (laughs) I try to again. It's I try to focus on what I can control. So that's when I get my admin in order. That's when I organize things. That's when I start to kind of up my marketing game. That's when I go through and, and clean things up. I try, I'm pretty organized already, but I try to give myself a little bit more of a, more of a schedule in those slower times that I'm not just wandering around. Like I, I tend to be a puppy. Like I'll go and look at the front window of the house. Like, so in slow times i coach i clean things up i organize files i make sure my taxes are in order and i do what it is that i can do and that makes me feel like i'm accomplishing something which makes me calm down and usually when i calm down more work comes in the door well those are the things that you need to do uh often the kinds of things you were mentioning when you're booking a lot excuse me you don't have time to take care of if you want to do some more studying with somebody if you're working on a new demo um those are those times to do that when you're not booked 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 all the time um of course we all want to be booked 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 all the time but uh i've been in this business a long time and it's always been a bit of ebb and flow uh and the more money you make when it goes down again you've spent some of that money on some things so even if you're (laughs) You're still worried, <laughs> even if you know it, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Uh, this house costs a lot. Jay Horace Black. Hey, Dave and Emma. Emma, congrats on the success. Uh, you. You're an inspiration. Love the quotes. Uh, thinking ginger on your wall and uh, Mike Fields quote. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dave, it's never too late to, too late to start yoga. I, I, I know really? that. I do a little bit, but... It's too late for me to get really, really bendy. I can get more bendy. Yes, you can. I, I can touch my toes now. Uh, but getting my hand all the way down my back, that's, that may never happen. <laughs> <laughs> and still, uh, I think it's a, a, a great thing to do. Let me ask you this. Do you think uh, yoga helps your voiceover career? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The breathing uh, techniques that I've learned in the yoga practice over the years come in super handy. Um, My lung capacity is much bigger. It's also mindset because learning to not control your mind, but recognize when your mind is kind of jumping all around the place and having techniques to be able to bring yourself back into focus 
is hugely helpful, but also the physical, the, the asana part of yoga, the, the physical movement of yoga, the healthier your body is, the, the healthier your instrument is. So I think that especially in voiceover, because it is such a sedentary lifestyle, mm. that movement is so important. It's so important. So, and yeah, if you're just, uh, sitting in your booth all day, every day, or for me, it's in the booth or sitting at my desk, yeah, uh, doing other things, paperwork, teaching, so forth and so on, um, yeah. that can weigh on you. Uh, yeah. Our bodies were designed to move and walk and do yes. things. Yeah. Uh, I know this isn't a, a you question, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to give a little bit more attention to uh, fans of video games that I'm in. Hi, Ew. Dave, just finished season Ew. one of The Walking Dead uh, Telltale series. Thank you for being my favorite character in the game. You're an absolute legend in the gaming community, and I want to thank you. No, thank you. Uh, that's, uh, that's still wonderful. And for some reason, that game is always the one uh, that people love. And let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I got that question. I got that question. All right. Uh, David Rex Rexin. Oh, he's checking off from the TLM 103 <laughs> check, MK416 check. check, Apollo Twin X check. I use the Apollo Quad. Uh, booth check. Yoga and meditation. Okay, fine. I'll get started. Promise. Good. <laughs> Good. I love it. You know, start slow and don't uh, don't have your expe expectations too high. And you know, nope. you would think that yoga, you're just, you know, you're in this. It hurts. It <laughs> hurts. <laughs> Oh, Max Goldberg. Hi, Dave and Hello, Emma. Thanks so much for all that you do at, for us as voice actors. Question, Emma, what's it feel like being interviewee compared to interviewer? <laughs> you know, it's always a little bit nerve wracking, but this has been very, very comfortable and very, very easy. So it's it's nice. I think it depends on who you're speaking to. I, I think it does. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to interview you a little bit more. I, I was taking all these other questions. So what, what's the toughest job you ever had? Oh, what's the toughest job I ever had? Like within voice? Within voice. Or, well, you know what? What popped into your head? The th toughest job I ever had was being a maid in a hotel. Oh, um, God. Yeah, I've done that for, I travel a lot. So I did a lot of different jobs, but the toughest job I've ever had in voice one of the most interesting jobs was a job that when I arrived at the studio, it was one of the, I think it was the first year that I was voicing. Um, and I walked into, it was at Cherry Beach in Toronto, which is a legendary studio in Toronto. And I walked in, checked in, and they asked me to come into the office. And they had, like, they had paper on the table face down. And they said, do you know what you are voicing for? And I was like, yeah, it's for this, you know, Adele, whatever. It was a woman's name and they said, yeah. And they slid the paper across the table and I flipped it over and it was for, um, Ashley Madison. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still okay? I was like, Oh, Oh. So did you do the oh. job? It was, it was an interesting day that was supposed to be like, I agreed to do, um, the job because it was just supposed to be one spot and they kept giving me more tags and more tags and more tags and trying not to, they ended up trying not to pay me for it. So, but of course, of course. Yeah. And for yeah. those who don't know, Ashley Madison was the site where married men could find, uh, uh, women to have affairs with. Yes. Uh, and, uh, it got hacked. And a whole lot of relationships were ruined. <laughs> Apparently the CEO was one of their best clients um, in, the, in the, the long run. But it was, as I said, it was the, one of the first, it was the first year I was voicing. I didn't know I could say no to things at this point. You know, when you're, yeah. you're, you're new and you don't, you don't know that you can say no. You're so, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but I learned very quickly after what, that <laughs> what's something that you might say no to now 
Um, animal cruelty in general, like marine land, anything like that, I won't voice for. I've been asked to do it before and I won't do it. Um, marine land, sea world, any of those things I won't voice for. Um, anything religious based, I won't voice for. Um, and uh, yeah, they're kind of two things that I'm, that there's a hard line in the sand for. Oh, yeah. And since now that you've answered that, I'll just pop this one. Emma, have you had to turn down any jobs and you're going to do the morals? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we we just went through that, Terry. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, here's a, a friend, Randy Thomas. Hi, Emma. You're a true Hello. voice actors who are aspiring and working and trying to find work-life balance. Love you. Very nice. Hey, Randy, that. how are you? Yeah. Randy is an inspiration and a mentor, and I adore you, Randy. Thank you for being here. Oh, She's been around for a long time and just has done wonderful work in a bunch of different areas. Yeah. Uh, Mac McGee, uh, my first booth, and still my booth after six years, is my walk-in closet. Luckily, my mm -hmm. wife has tons of clothes for soundproofing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and thank goodness sound doesn't affect the clothes at all. Exactly. No, exactly. Chance, no chance of messing up your wife's clothes. Um, of course, now if you're doing a thing where there's a lot of spit coming out. Uh... Jay Horace Black, once again. Emma, you mentioned Hello. AM meditation. I am right now revamping my daily routine. About how many minutes is your daily routine of meditation? I do Silva, Sadhguru, mm -hmm. and Marie Diamond Magnificence. Mm-hmm. Um, lately I've been doing, I just started using insight timer, which is a free meditation app. Um, and the meditations can range anywhere from four minutes to 20 minutes. I usually aim for about 10 to 15, um, as I first wake up and I've got this wonderful headset that it's, I has, I have it right beside my bed. It's like an eye mask that has headphones in it. So. Mm -hmm. I'm still completely, I'm not awake. I just turn around, I t grab my phone and I turn on the meditation, put this on top of my head. So my, my eyes are still completely closed and covered with this thing. It's great. And you're just immersed in sound. And and your meditation is pre-recorded of some other voice or some other music? Yeah, it's some other voice. I'm planning to do my own because it, your brain responds faster to your own voice saying all of these things than it does to somebody else's voice. So, you know who just put out a meditation uh, video or a meditation uh, music? Who? Lil Wayne. Oh, really? Lil what? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and uh, I was watching. Clementine, come on. I was watching uh, a morning show and he was on and it was like, oh, Lil Wayne, what's he going to do? He's going to get, oh, a meditation video. You never know. You never know. You just mm -hmm. never know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, DF Raisin, uh, with your wife being a musician, do you ever collaborate on any pro projects? Or if not, have you ever considered it? Very good question. And I thought about uh, her studio, your studio, um, any collab there, music for voiceover? I've some sung with her on some projects. Her voice and my voice are almost identical, and she is bilingual, so she's fluent in French. And I have tried for years and years to get her. I'm like, you do the French version, I'll do the English version. It'll be great, but she won't do it. Um, and so, your voices are almost so. identical. That's They're almost identical. Her mother, our, our mothers cannot tell us apart on the phone. Oh boy. Like, who I bet you've had now? some fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, can, can her son distinguish between the two of you? What When he has his hearing aids in, yeah. Oh, that's right. He's, He's not hearing. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, Grace Noon, I worked as a maid in a hotel for exactly a week. Oh, boy. So, right? It's, oh, it's boy. not easy. It's, it's not a fun job. I can imagine. Um, I remember when I first moved to L.A. Uh, and things were going, started gangbusters. And then pff, there was a, a, a downturn in the economy. 
uh, I'd had a cartoon series, a bunch of stuff, and then everything just dried up. And yeah. what we were talking about when you say, oh, gosh, wait, what's going to happen? Uh, and I did two things. One, I started knocking on radio doors again, and mm-hmm. uh, I took a bartender course. And uh, I got pretty good at mixing drinks in this bartender course. Uh, and when we were to graduate, because what they were supposed to do was, uh, we're going to give you all these leads to all these places. Um, and the guy who ran the place pulled me and he says, you know, uh, you handle yourself pretty well. What would you think of uh, becoming an instructor here? And I was like, what the absolute F? <laughs> you just you just shattered all my belief in you guys because they were telling these great stories. Yeah, well, I used to be on a ship and pouring drinks, and I was in this oh. wonderful bar, and I, and I went, yeah. oh, that was all lies. That was all lies. Yep. I, I yep. never did. Uh, I never did become a bartender, but uh, I did go back on radio for a little while, and thankfully, it wasn't the worst job in the world. Oh, bartending's fun. There, there are parts of the hospitality industry that are very, very fun, and bartending is one of those aspects. But, but not cleaning rooms. No, no. What's What's the weirdest thing that happened as a cleaning rooms as a, a hotel maid? You just see, the, you know, you just see the kind of the dark side of people and how people's really. When I go to a hotel now, obviously because I've worked in the industry, it's when I'm leaving. The first of all, I don't get room service ever. Like I just don't. I don't need my bed made. I don't need fresh towels every day. I'm there for a couple of days. It's fine. So I always put the "Do Not Disturb" sign on my door because they don't need to clean it. Then I leave a cash tip at the end. I strip my sheets and I put all like if you put all of the towels that have been used into the bathtub or the shower, they will they will pray for you. They will send blessings to heaven for you because it just it reduces the amount of work that they have to do. Um, Because people can be really vile, like the things that you'd walk into a hotel room and be like, was there a dog here that was relieving himself or a person? Like, that's not, wow. Yeah, people do some crazy things in hotels. Well, you know what? Thank you. Because I spend a lot of time in hotels because I do a lot of traveling. And I, too, uh, I don't like them to come in and clean while I'm there. I'm never that there that long. If I need some extra towels, I'll go down the hall while they're, hey, let me have a couple of towels. Um, And I don't think I'd leave my room a mess, but now I'll just leave everything piled together in the shower or the tub. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Radio TV God, Randy Thomas is trying to get your attention on Facebook comments. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, Well, I'll see if she's down there. (laughs) Radio TV Don Elliott. Okay. Not sure what that was. Uh, well, well, we'll just keep going down this way. Uh, cool musician playlist. Ashley Madison. Oh, boy. See? <laughs> it's back to haunt us. Uh, Sorry. was an infidelity site. No surprise. They tried to hold off on paying. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I always thought, now that's just weird. Uh, hey, Jen Henry, another Hi, great Jen. talent. Um, you both change me year after year. Thank you for the footprints you leave on my heart and mind. Oh, Jen. So, oh. so and, and, and you know, uh, Jen Henry, talking to you, you are such a talent. She um, really is. Uh, she'll pop into a class of mine and she always just blows me away. And, yep. uh, I understand because from time to time I'll pop into somebody's class just to, get a refresher um but it, my thought is oh jen you don't you don't need this you're you're killing jen's it. crazy talented crazy yes, talented yes. yeah hollis 40 hey dave emma is one of the most positive energies i've encountered and that had how much do you think that helps your career uh having positive energy uh we often don't get to interact that much with our clients especially in our home studios and things are being done by email how, how do you think your particular good vibes, uh, good vibes bring you work? I think that work begets work. And I think that what you put out, you get back. For me, it's always about, I try to live my life from a place of service and from a place of 
providing people with a platform to be seen and to be heard. I feel like I'm I'm the bitter middle child. Um, so I felt like growing up, I wasn't seen and I wasn't heard. And so it's it's almost become like a life mission of mine to to let people feel seen and feel heard and provide that with my energy. So energetically, just like I see you, I hear you, I love you, you are valued, you are, you are, you are worthy, you should be here. You're welcome. So okay. I think yeah. positivity in general, it what what you're putting out comes back to you. So yeah. I try to be as positive as possible. Well, I do know I do know back in the day when we were going into studios, this is my other dog. Uh, when we we're going into studios, there were some people with reputations. Ernie Anderson, who was the voice of Ford and uh, he was also the ABC voice, the love boat, uh, oh, cool. di big, deep, rich voice. Uh, but on sessions, he could cuss people out. He was kind of a jerk until you said, hey, you know, cut it. Uh, but he would intimidate people. And there were a few other people like that. You can't get away with that anymore. No, no. I always want to be easy to work with. I want to be remembered as being fun and easy to work with and cooperative and joyful and efficient. And, th th you know, I try to make, th especially the engineer, if, if you have, if you're blessed enough to have directed sessions, like you, that, that person is your best friend. Yes. Like that, that person is your best friend. They're your defender. All of the things. Engineers are incredible creatures. And I'm so grateful for all of them that we get to work with. And it's, Make sure you remember the name of your engineer and be kind to them, be respectful, and they will they will bring you work because they will remember working with you. Not only will they bring you work, they will make the work you're doing in that moment easier. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a session and uh, the the junior executive is doing the, the directing because the guy that makes the decision is on the golf course and couldn't be bothered. And we're yes. at take 24, 25, and every, and he doesn't know how to direct and it's, you're, you're kind of frustrated and you're trying to keep the frustration out of your voice and uh the engineer will do like hey you know uh you might want to go back and listen to take number three yes uh, and ah now we're done fantastic yep. Yep. uh here's a kind of meaty question here uh lyle mccarty uh can you guys talk about contracts do you draft them or are they prepared by the client do you have suggestion on what to keep an eye out for to protect yourself? Your thoughts, Emma? Any contracts in general, you don't necessarily, as a voice actor, you don't necessarily need to have a, a hard set contract. Anything that's done in email, anything that's done in writing is a contract. So the contracts that I paid the most attention to are, um, I use the Nava AI waiver on every job that I do. And it's actually been wonderful that the number of clients, there's just, there's zero pushback. It's, I send it over, can you please sign this? And they're like, yeah, absolutely, no problem. There you go, send it back. Um, with contracts in general, usually there's a, most companies will kind of use boilerplate contracts. So there's a lot of stuff within the contract that actually doesn't apply to the job that you're doing. You can cross out things that, that don't apply, just to, to make it more specific. Cross them out and then initial. And initial. Yeah, uh, but generally uh, anything that's done by email is is a contract. It's binding. You know, the the kind of thing you want to look for right now, uh, make sure that whatever they had agreed to in, in talking yes. to you is the amount of money. Um, oftentimes, we're so happy to get the job, we are just going to work for the session fee. Uh, mm -hmm. There should also be a usage fee. Now, I'm sag after, so that gets covered uh, right away. If you're not in the union, uh, one of the things you can do is, once again, use uh, the NAVA boilerplate or the GVAA boilerplate uh, mm -hmm. that lets this client know they're being, you're, they're paying you uh, to, for your session and to use it for X amount of time. After that, yep. they have to pay again. Be careful of the in perpetuity clause yeah, there. You do, do not that. want to sign something that is in perpetuity and people try to do it all the time. Uh, and if you can include an anti-AI uh, language in your contract, do so. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Because unfortunately, there are people out there that will steal your voice and they don't need a lot of it. Uh, yeah. A session could be enough to steal your voice, clone it, and just use it. So those are the things uh, that I would worry about. Uh, and also making sure that you're agreeing to everything prior to the session, because once the session is completed, you you cannot change the, the terms. The terms have to be agreed to before everything is done. Uh, and a tough thing to do, I've had to do it not in a long time, thankfully, but if you get in a session and it's not what the contract was for yes. things have changed uh call your agent say mm -hmm. excuse me I, I gotta call my agent uh if you're the one who booked your own thing then it, it really is on you uh and i know one of the tough things about that is so many of us are more uh artist than business person yeah and yeah. what we do is something we do for free if money weren't a thing, if you didn't need money, yeah. hey, we do we do this for free. Yep. Um, so often, we need to really look out for ourselves uh, because in the arts, often, especially as you're getting started, you just oh, I, I want my opportunity, I want, just want that chance, mm -hmm. uh, but don't let that chance bite you in the butt. Kat Peterson, uh, Emma, your promo samples have been so great lately. Thank you for pushing the envelope for the ladies. Ah, Thank you. Uh, let me ask you this. Are you doing particular um, work that you can talk about for uh, women voice actors? I just booked my first intro sports promo for the National Women's Soccer League. Thank you. So that was, it's live, it's live, it's, it's, it's out in the wild, so I can say it. Um, it was a brilliant, brilliant script. It's for uh, Amazon Sports, which is a new part of Amazon. They just started uh, their sports channel. They're going to own the world and, soon. Yes. Yes. So that was a very, very cool project to be a part of. And yeah, women in promo were, 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 I mean, Randy's been kicking bum since for forever and ever, you know, for a while. For a good long but while. We're, we're, we're trying to follow in her footsteps and continue. When to... I started in L.A. in 1990 uh, doing promos, uh, it was SAG and after and after I had the promo work. Uh, women did 11% of promo work. Uh, it's at 50, if not more now. Uh, so uh, times have changed. I, I look at uh, women's basketball now, and had it mm -hmm. not been for Title IX, uh, we wouldn't have women's basketball the way we have it now. Uh, yeah. So once again, inclusion, inclusion, inclusion. It's good for everybody. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Antonellis. I, by the way, uh, I believe Tom is my guest next week. Oh, cool. uh, uh, I'm reflecting now on some of the conventions I've had with both of you, Dave and Emma. I want to publicly thank you for your kindness, uh, which has been a huge, which has been huge and frequent. Thank you both. Ah, Tom, Tom, you are just a dote. He's a sweetheart. Now, Tom, you might be crying now. <laughs> Stop crying. Oh, uh, Tom is uh, a wonderful guy and famous yes. for, for wearing his emotions on his sleeve. Yeah, uh, huge heart, huge heart. Uh, let's see. Oh, we're running out of time. Let me get some more in. Uh, Dave, Emma, performance. If you have a uh, string, say, of four lines, fast tags as an audition, do you change your emotion on each line or keep the same? If you have a string of, say, four fast line, fast tag lines, four lines, fast tag lines in an audition. Um, I don't for me, generally, those tag lines um there at the end you're just trying to get it in as quickly as you can um mm -hmm. they're probably not looking for a lot of change of emotion there i usually get told one of my coaches always just says with tags just say the words <laughs> yeah <laughs> as fast don't as make you it can. complicated yeah. just say the words <laughs> just say the words uh and you run into that a lot those those legal things uh smack lewis what's up smack i met you in uh uh atlanta here a few a couple weeks ago emma 
How do you balance being a wife, stepmom, VO, road ro table host, and still being an effective actor marketer? Lots of coffee. Lots of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> now, you just, you, you, you know, the, the, the things that are important to me, I make time for it. And it's, you know, for me, there's non-negotiables. Meditating in the morning is a non-negotiable. Working out is a non-negotiable. Walking is a non-negotiable. Spending time with my wife is a non-negotiable. So we have date night is Monday night. That, and we may not see each other for the rest of the week at all. Because she works out of town sometimes and stuff like that. But we make sure that Monday night is the night that we sit down. Phones go off and we sit down. We have like a, hey, who are you? How's it going? What's happening? Ah. And then Tuesday night is always Clubhouse. So there you go. The voiceover on yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, Smack, um, somebody introduced me to Smack uh, at VO Atlanta. I said, hey, this is the guy that sounds like you. He's the younger Dave Fenoy. Yay. Uh, I got a hit out on you, Smack. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're going to wrap it up here in a minute, but I want to get a couple more questions in. Uh, the This Week in VO podcast, episode 54 with Lynn Norris, talks a lot about contracts, and I found it very helpful. And once again, one of the things I love is the interplay of the people uh, in the comments section, and uh, that's an answer uh, for the gentleman who was asking about contracts. Uh, D.F. Frazen, Q in my basement. I have the art voice channel, but I have been told it may be overkill for VO. But I read that you use Voxbox. Do you use it for all your recordings? I think he's talking to you, or is he talking to me? No, that's you. I don't use okay. Voxbox. Um, I don't have the art voice channel. Um, and I do have Voxbox as the plugin. And the secret to plugins is allowing your voice to be sweetened, but without anybody knowing that it's been sweetened, yes. that the compression is there, but nobody hears, feels that compression. Uh, if you notice it and you can say, oh yeah, I've got compression on, it's too much. Mm -hmm. It's too much. Uh, let's see, well, we're gonna go in one. Uh, yeah, I think we can wrap it up there. There's a lot of chit chat between. Hey, Emma, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, this has been a pleasure. We could have gone on, I think, for a little bit longer and uh, heard a lot more. I, I, I'm going to ask you one more question. Um, okay. What would you? What would your advice be uh, for new people knocking on the voiceover door? The world has changed from where it was even when you got in. What are mm -hmm. the things? Say, what are the five things somebody needs to do to put together a voiceover career? You need to understand that it's a business. It's not about the sound of your voice. So you need to understand how to run a business. So if you don't understand how to be a small business owner, that's something that you need to look at. You need to coach because it's, again, it's not about the sound of your voice. It's about your ability to play a character. It's about your ability to share a message. It's about your ability to tell a story. Um, do your own research. There are so many free resources available online that you can, um, you know, there's great books, there's great websites, there's great uh, forums and platforms that you can uh, take advantage of that are free. There's Ask and Dave Fenoy Anything. On there's YouTube. Ask Dave Fenoy Anything. There's the VoiceOver Roundtable. There's NAVA. There's the GVAA. There are a bajillion Facebook groups. Um, and you can reach out to people like me. And probably people like Dave and ask questions. I'm always happy to help if I can. There you go. All right. Emma O'Neill, ladies and gentlemen, let me say thank you again. Uh, much appreciated that you are here. Uh, and uh, a bravo, a bravo, a bravo. A reminder tomorrow, uh, I'll be doing a uh, webinar for uh, GVAA, the Global Voice Academy. You can go to globalvoiceacademy.com. It's $39, um, and it's going to be voice acting for video games. Um, you're going to love it, and we'll have a good time. I'm not sure how many people I'll be able to get to do some reads, but you will definitely learn to understand the method I use for creating characters. Uh, and with that said, I am going to take my leave of you. Until next time, when Tom Antonellis is my guest, book something.